We need to unfriend worldliness. How many of you have unfriended someone on Facebook? Come on, be honest. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. It's painful because they find out, right? Unless you do that scary one, you know, the, I mean the secret one. But if you really are flat out, you just... <clears throat> Did you know, look at James 4. It actually says in James 4, unfriend worldliness. James 4.4. 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. What God is saying is, the next verse, do you think the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? God says, I'm jealous. I don't want you looking at everything the world has. I want you engaged to me and have an eye single for me. So he wants us to unfriend worldliness. By the way, what was the first New Testament book? Most likely the book of James. James was the pastor of the first church of Jerusalem. So what's the first New Testament book most people read in the New Testament church? James. And what does James say? Unfriend worldliness. Avoid pleasure-dominated living. Why? Because James 4, 6 says that when I'm proud and do my own thing and the world is all about pride and lust flesh and the pride of life, that hinders my spiritual growth. And most of us don't realize the power of humbling ourselves. God says, I resist the proud, James 4 says, but I pour out my grace on the humble. You want to get a shower, a douse of grace? I always think about those uh, sports things where the winning coach, and they always run up behind him with the big Gatorade cooler, and they go, and dump it on him. That, in my mind, is a picture of, but God pours out his grace on the humble. And that's what he wants to do.